Namaste. Hi. A lot of our random aches and pains come from stagnation in the hips, imbalances them. For example, you wake up in the morning with sore neck, heavy knees, joint pain here and there, unless you've hurt a particular body part, and that's another different uh, story altogether. But those random ones that we cannot pinpoint the cause, they come from imbalances in the hips. For one, yeah, the hips being the foundation of the physical body. The spine even depends on the stability of the hips. So even neck pain, yeah? yeah. So neck, yeah, so shoulder, they come from lower issues affecting the hips. So for today, let me just teach you yeah, stretches you can perform. Yeah, not just during this moment or instances, but you can adapt this daily. Yeah. You can even do this on your bed after waking up in the morning. All right, so we start on our stomach, yeah? belly on the floor, and then you can practice this sequence with yeah, a cushion yeah, to keep your body and the joints supported and soft. Okay, the first position being the reverse corpse. All right. So either you extend your arms forward or you just rest them by your side. And then here, the forehead resting on the floor, and then just adjust by moving your hips and the legs away from the upper back. Okay. If breathing is difficult here, yeah, you can actually yeah, place like a, a pillow underneath your forehead so you have more space to breathe, or you can just rest the arms by your side, okay? And then here, just stay, breathe, yeah, adjusting body parts as required. Okay. In about one minute, you do this, lying on your stomach, prone positions, particularly eases the tension affecting the lower back and the hips. You can do your, half of your practice with your arms resting by your side and then the, the remaining time with your arms resting forwards. Mm -hmm. And here you breathe. And this decompresses as well, yeah, the posterior part of the brain. Yeah, eases the tension there and affects the optical functions, yeah, the rear part of the brain. So by allowing that to decompress, you also relax your optic muscles. All right, and then from there, just fold the elbows. You can turn the head now to the side, folding your knees, and then circle them around. So this is one of my favorite hip stretches, yeah, mobility around the joints of the knees. And as you circle, like you are lubricating your hip joints, the sockets there, and then reverse, circle the other direction. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> All right, and then you can do like side to side, like the windscreen wipers, yeah, let them fall. Okay, and then around in circles again. And change, you can do, yeah, half circle around the front, and then full circle, and half circle around the back, and full circle. It's a random ones in side to side. Okay, and if your head fatigue is looking that way, just turn the other direction. Okay, now, next, lift one hip up and let that hip hang down and change. All right, and you can even do it with your forehead resting on your arms, resting on your hands. Inhale as you lift, exhale as the foot hangs, so you can even allow that foot to touch the floor behind you. We are twisting now, at the same time stretching the intercostal muscles, and the side trunk, your obliques, and, and then feel free to lift that shoulder if twisting is difficult for your back, and around in circles again. Great, and then side to side, and change.
Good. And then can you just steady the knees and then rubbing your ankles around, pointing and flexing, massaging the joints, yeah. And then crisscrossing those legs. Good. All right. And then placing your hands beside the chest. We're going to decompress by doing a kneel. Okay. And then here you do your balasana or the position of the child stretch. If this is difficult, you can open the gap of your knees wider. Or you can place something like a pillow underneath your chest yeah, to support your back. And then here, fold the elbows and then resting your arms easy to the side. Don't overreach. Yeah? You can also try moving your hips a bit of a side to side, loosening yeah, the sacrolumbar spine at the same time, inching your spine forward and resting down. Good. And then here, you just soften, you breathe. about a minute here if you're doing it on your bed and this is comfortable for your knees yeah if, and if you're doing it on a sturdy surface yeah that extra cushion keeps the joints of the knees protected and supported as well okay now body forwards and then from there just down and sit right and on your back okay and then here the feet are like bent to a tent and then just waving them to side to side and here we lose and now yeah the adductors as well as the outer hip and you start to swing that knee up to your chest okay you can cross your arms underneath your head to provide elevation and as well as to increase the stretch to the side trunk this one, another favorite of mine, this one. But it feels good. Okay, now next time, yeah, you can crawl to the back of your mat. All right, so lift one leg up and then just angle to the opposite leg and then rub this hip around. Mm, you might hear pops and clicks there. Yeah, and then as you circle that leg, allow your thigh to roll outside of your hip crease. Now you use the hand to do that. All right, and then you can kick and then bring bring that knee back in. So like your legs form the shape of the frog, and then you can even move this muscles, yeah? This part, yeah, away from your buttocks as you circle around. Oh, feels good, this one. Like you're stretching deeply into your sacrolumbar spine. You can bend and pull, and then the opposite arm go high above you. Okay, and then kicking that leg up and down, those random ones. All right, and then from there, side to side again. Notice how your hips, yeah, feel so much lighter. And then do the opposite side. Okay, first circle round, like you're going to circle towards the bottom leg and around. Okay. You can lightly open, and then you can even bring this or stretch the shoulder away from the side throat. Okay, and use the hands yeah, to stretch the inner thigh muscles away from the creases, away from the groin region. You can go as deep and as far as you can reach them. Okay, and then using the hands to stretch the hamstrings away from the buttock, and then this part yeah yeah away from the buttocks oh, it feels good you can also rub the tongue around the mouth now this is in connection to the lesson on the guyasana this is actually guyasana yeah kriya bhatis there's no name for this just feels good doing them mm. yeah because your inner body yeah is open all right and do the swinging good and circle around okay one leg may be feeling a bit tight this is my not really tight but the one that gives me a little bit more of that imbalances 
and rub in circles and then side to side sleep. Okay. And then from there, just flip over. Yes, yeah, so bending that knee to the side, and the other one stretched, and circle that open leg around. And then, and then side to side and around reverse. And then you can yeah, allow yeah, the side trunk to lengthen forward. Yeah, the mat sacridasana, this one, with the flow. Okay, now, if it's uh, yeah, <coughs> accessible, if you're ready, open that arm wide across and then flip over the chest. Mm, stretching the shoulder. But if this is difficult, just keep circling those legs around. Great. All right, and then back to the chest. Yeah, before you change, back to your leg circles and then lifting and twisting, and rubbing, and decompressing. <laughs> Keep going. All right. Good, and then back to your kneeling, and then sit back again on your hips, okay? And then side to side. You can also adapt this as you're warming up. This is my warming up actually for some deeper techniques I practice later on. Right. You can just sit or you can even transition to the downward dog. But if you're doing it on your bedside, you can't do the downward dog dead. So just sit there. Yeah? And from here, you can do alternate leg lift. Okay, you can cross through, sit. And roll on your back. So we're just repeating a sequence again, side to side, swing and twist. Mm -hmm. You can now increase the range of motion by kicking that leg higher. But you can also reach that arm and the other arm catches the foot at the side. Good. And then you can rub that hip again, circle around. All right, as the leg curls in, Move your inner thigh muscles away from the creases of the hip. Right. Kick and bend. And then you can even rub that inner thigh. You can open and circle around the hip joint. And the other leg. If I do this, I always engage my tongue because this spot corresponds to the side of the mouth, all the way to yeah, the tongue or the gums yeah, behind the lips and your upper teeth and the bottom as well. Okay, and then side to side. Hmm, feel loose now? Huh? Okay, now let's rock up and down a few times. Yeah, just to decompress and change. All right, and then flip over. And then you're going to end with the other knee bent, and then circle your spare leg at the back. And then start to adjust the upper back as well. All right, and flipping and circling. Because sometimes tension, ten, what tension does, tension compresses the body. Yeah, like everything is pulling into the center. Now what you want to do now is to move away from the midline. Yes, it's good to hug to the midline yeah, for the support of your spine. But if you do too much of the hugging to midline, and then tension does that, when we're stressed, we tend to contract and then shorten, now moving away from the midline by allowing your extremities to move decompresses your body. And this leads to, of course, the relaxation of your nerves. Okay, and then that arm opens wide, flipping outside. 
but I also uh, try and move this arm around. Right. And then if it's ready, you can lace your hands at the back. Mm. And then back to your chest and the hips. Okay. And then you can extend arms, cross them, fold them, depending on how you feel. And then moving around in circles again. And then do the monkey mouth. I call this monkey mouth. Like the monkey stretching the tongue, the mouth, and the face. And side to side. And swallow. Good. All right. Pressing. And sitting. And folding. Hmm. That's the end of the sequence, actually. Yeah, but my self practice, I end with this. And you can try yeah, if you're ready. Pushing through the forearms, lifting, walking, and do the shir sasana. Because those are previous techniques you lose in the hips. You awaken the dormant centers there, and then you flow the energy abundantly through the lower extremities. This is a way of mudra. And breathe. Your hips are so light, body is light, that performing this is actually light as well. Okay, yeah, although I can still hold longer, uh, but just to show you a structure. All right, descending down with control and then easing back down to your set. Great, All right? And that's it, yeah? Random motions, circulars. There's even, like, you can even design your own one, yeah? And then the effect is instantaneous, huh? Like your body is open, light, yeah? calm brain, relaxed mind, especially after that inversion. But, yeah, you're not required to do that inversion. You can just lie down in the Shavasana after. All right. Or if you're doing it in the morning, get up and then do the rest of your day. Okay, let's finish. Arms lift. <clears throat> and exhale out. Yeah. Inhaling, you can look up. Exhale. And this next one, hold it up, spreading the fingers, and the hands form the seal. Exhale, head to chest. Hope you like that one, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye bye.